What's up guys, Noah from Template FC here and we're back for episode three of creating football kits um, for beginners in Photoshop. And these videos are brought to you by footballshirtculture.com and designfootball.com. Both are great kit resources um, that you can use for creating your own kits or just learning about kits. Now, this episode, we're gonna be designing our own kit and showing you how to customize a pattern or create one from scratch. Some of the things we're gonna do is like create some striping, some gradients, uh, modifying patterns, and some techniques you can use to create your very own pattern. So uh, we're gonna be working a lot in the front design here and kind of just creating several different designs um, for this Manchester United kit. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna hide the patterns we have here. We're gonna come back to them though in a second. And I wanna show you the most basic of designs, which is stripes. So obviously you have horizontal or vertical stripes. So I'm gonna create some horizontal stripes here. So I like to go ahead and get the rectangle tool and create my striping width. So we'll say, we'll do something like this. And of course you can go thinner or thicker and then you wanna go ahead and duplicate this rectangle several times. So um, if you know how many rectangles you want, you can go ahead and duplicate that many times, or you can kinda just feel it out. So basically what I do is just press Command J a few times. Um, so I'm gonna say like maybe seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm gonna take one of those, click, hold shift, and drag it to the very bottom. Um, so this is where I want my striping to end, this is where I want it to start. And what I can do is hold shift and select all these rectangles and go to layer, distribute, and vertical centers and press that. And that should evenly space out these stripes. I can also go here and distribute if you have these controls. By the way, to do this in Photo P, if you have all your layers copied and set up, uh, make sure you have the move tool selected and come here to this um, equal gaps. And if you're doing a uh, vertical, you wanna go to the equal gaps here. Uh, but if we do this one, we get our evenly spaced um, rectangles. Um, and you'll notice the red is a little thicker than the black. So maybe I wanna add one more in there. So I could just duplicate any one of those, select them all and do the same thing. And that's closer to even. Um, uh, you could of course mess around with that. You could mess around with the spacing. Maybe we get this bottom one and drag it further down and then select them all. Go back and let's do it again. And then realign these. Maybe we want the Adidas logo all in the red or something. Like that, cool. And then we can press Command G to group them all together. And all together we could set this to like overlay or something like that. And if we save that, we have a nice um, horizontal striping effect, just like that. Of course, you can do that the other way and get the vertical stripes. The next thing I wanna show you guys is how to do gradients. So we'll actually keep with this striping effect and I'll show you how to create a gradient. Now, if you want a gradient on the whole thing, you could create a new layer, go to the gradient tool and then select your colors here and go ahead and make a gradient just like that. And there you go. But um, if you want it to be a little more interesting than that, um, like if you want it on certain objects, you can come into those objects, double click and go to gradient overlay, um, set it to normal and then choose your gradient. So for example, I'm gonna go black to white and I want my angle to be 180 or negative 180. So let's do that, click okay. Um, and then let's right click, copy and right click, paste it onto the next one. But on this next one, I wanna double click gradient and flip it the other way and click okay. And then we could do that for all of these. So you have gradients going in either direction. So what I'm gonna do is copy that first layer style and then every other rectangle, I'm gonna hold command and select just like this. And then I'm gonna right click paste and that's every other. And then let's go ahead and copy the other gradient and select the other ones without a layer style and paste. And then we get a pretty unique gradient there. And we could also set that group to overlay and then that gradient will affect it. And that looks a lot more interesting than just solid stripes. 
Um, and of course you could not set it to overlay, you could leave it as normal and select different colors for the gradient. Um, it doesn't have to be a rectangular shape, it could be any shape, it doesn't have to be a linear gradient, it could be a radial gradient, all types of stuff. So feel free to mess around with different settings to get different looks. Uh, let's go ahead and delete that for now and let's go ahead and modify a pattern. So this is one of my favorite ways of creating kits um, is to take a pattern that we already have such as this IAX pattern and modifying it in different ways. And you don't even have to use a complex pattern like the IAX one we're using. You could use something very simple. So for example, this Germany kit, which is one of my most popular kit designs or one of the more praised ones where I got a lot of good feedback from it. This design on the sleeves came from this design on the front. I basically used this striping pattern to create the sleeve designs uh, using some of the techniques I'm gonna show you. But you can see it looks completely different and really nice. And then something like this France kit, which is my most popular kit to date, this design that looks like it's cleverly thought out and cool, um, all it was was this pattern here um, I took it, which this is a shape from, or uh, this is a brush from my brush pack. And all I did was press command T, press command, click the top anchor point, held shift and drag it over. And you can see we get this cool looking shape and that's all it is. So little simple modifications to simple patterns can result in some great looks. So feel free to just create simple patterns and modify them. They don't have to be too complicated. And if you just throw in different colors too, you might get some very interesting results like the Germany kit. So one way you could do this is select both of these patterns because it's, it's one pattern, but it's acting as two layers. So we're going to group them together. So. Uh, select both of them holding shift and press command G and I like to go to the layer mask and add a layer mask to the group and then if we get black as our main color and get the brush tool and I'll go and find one of my brushes that I have I have a lot um, we'll actually keep it simple maybe we go with these striping uh, the striping brush which is what we just created the same effect basically and if I click the layer mask will erase certain parts and you can see that in itself is a pretty cool looking pattern. Um, but one of my favorite things to do is to take something like this and then duplicate the whole group, go to that layer mask and press command I and that will inverse the color. So the black is now white, the white is now black and it completes our pattern again. But if we go into our pattern, we could move this object around and stagger it to get something like this, which is a lot more interesting. Um, so if we move this around, we could even maybe command minus to zoom out, press command T, rotate it, just to see what that looks like. Maybe we come to the layer, press command I to inverse the colors. And you can see just by doing that, this is a lot more complex looking, a lot more interesting, um, very unique. And if we save that and go back to our uh, mock-up, we can see what that looks like. And I think that looks pretty good. That's actually a pretty decent design. And now if you want to add like custom shapes and you have an idea for your design, of course you should go for that. Um, and the best way to create custom shapes is to use the pen tool. So the pen tool you can click um, to add a point and then click somewhere else and it'll create a spline. And you can cl uh, click and drag to curve that um, and go around creating custom shapes. So if you have an idea for a shape you want, you can go ahead and create it. So maybe we, we do something like this, cap it off, and you could maybe right click. We created a new layer, so we could right click fill path, fill it uh, with uh, black, gray, white, um, or a color of our choice. Um, so maybe we, well, we'll just pick this yellow, sure, click OK and it fills it, right click delete path, and there's our layer. We could also do this to um, a layer mask. So if we came into our group here, we could actually group both of these again, add a layer mask, and then come in, right click fill path, do black to be negative, right click delete path, and then that deletes that spot. Uh, maybe we inverse it so it's only in that area. Um, so basically using the pen tool is the best way to create your own custom shapes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete this though. 
the more you add of layer masks, like if you add layer masks on layer masks, it will slow things down too. So just be careful doing that. Now, one of my favorite things to do to a design at the end is to add a little bit of a liquify effect. So say um, you like this pattern, but uh, you want it to have a little more interest. You could take um, that will take the pattern and the color fill layers and select them both while holding shift. Press command J to duplicate and command E to merge. And if you go to filter liquify, you want to go ahead to this twirl pattern or this twirl brush and use command plus to zoom in. You can use the bracket keys to change the size of the brush and you can go around and kind of just twirl and distort the pattern a little bit. And you could go crazy with this or go more subtle. It's up to you. I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Um, some of the other tools do other things. So this top one, you can just click and drag to move things around if that's a little easier. I personally love the twirl. Um, but if we do something small like that and click OK, you can see this gives us a different style and a different look, which I think looks pretty good. And we could save that. And we have yet another interesting pattern that is all coming from the same thing. But you can see all these are fairly different in their look. So you can see we have this design that's option one. We have option two here, and then we have option three here. And you can see the different steps we took to get to that final product. Um, the main thing that you might struggle with is creating an initial pattern. Um, and there's just a lot of time and effort and thought that has to go into it. Uh, I can't tell you how to create a pattern because usually it's just something that you think of or you just mess around experimenting with. Uh, but like I said, I really like to start with a pattern as a base. So something like this, this IX pattern and going from there, whether I get it from the patterns pack or I create it myself, you could use whatever. And there's a lot of easy ways to create patterns from other um, tutorials you can look up for Photoshop and things like that. You could also find images or different patterns online and use them as a base. Um, and that's kind of the best way to go about doing it, in my opinion. One last thing I want to mention, uh, if we go back to this pattern, this is a lot more like liquidy and organic. So if we create a new layer, go to our brush tool and get a normal brush, just a hard brush and set the stroke to maybe five. So it's something small like this. And if you go to your brush or your pen tool, you can click around and cre create some like organic looking lines. And it can be pretty random. So if you do something like this, you can go to right click stroke path and on that new layer, go ahead to brush, click OK and whatever you color you have here, which is black in our case, it will make a line path so we can right click delete the path and we have some lines. So this is an easy way to add kind of like a line design to your um, pattern. If we save this, this isn't the best of line patterns, but it's something a little interesting. If we go back, you can see it's a nice, easy way to add different lineage. Now, those are some of the techniques I use to create um, patterns in Photoshop or kit designs in Photoshop. Of course, there's more that you can find there. So be sure to look out for other Photoshop tutorials from our channel or in YouTube on YouTube in general. There is a bunch of Photoshop tutorials that you can use to create patterns. Just be sure to look up different things, uh, experiment a lot, and you should be able to create some unique stuff. Whenever you finish your designs, by the way, be sure to go to designfootball.com and upload them for the community to see. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe to our channel for more. Be sure to check out footballshirtculture.com and designfootball.com for kit related stuff. Check out templatefc.com down below for your mock-up template or patterns pack. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.